Uh, I was at an American Society of Bariatric Medicine meeting. I'll talk about it tomorrow. But look at the diet they're recommending their patients. Eggs and bacon, olive, uh, steak, blue cheese. Um, and, and people don't even think about food anymore as food. They think about it as their component parts. You know, All they see are like calories or fat. Or, is that a protein or is it a carb? It's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Meanwhile, in the blue zones where people have the longest, healthiest life, no one's counting carbs. They're not walking around Okinawa thinking, well, I wonder how much fat is in that yam that's over there. Uh, and, their, and their weight is so much lower than ours, than ours and drops over a lifetime, whereas ours goes up over a lifetime. And when you look at their diet, the vast majority of what they eat is actually yams. The vast majority. They're a carb-eating society. So is every single blue zone. Eats predominantly carbohydrates. So we'll talk about this tomorrow. Where do you get your protein? Uh, nothing <laughs> irritates me more than that question, which is why I wrote the book. But let's get real simple on what to eat. Uh, what to eat? Easy. Eat real food. Not too much. Mostly plants, as Michael Pollack said. It's very simple. It's very easy. It does, in fact, happen that, you know, they did that that study on the biggest losers and they found that when they lost weight their metabolism slows and then they gain back weight. If you lose weight slowly with a highly nutritious, high fiber diet that stretches your stomach receptors, that sends vagal nerve res um, signals back to your brain, you actually get full and your metabolism doesn't slow. So I've been checking metabolism on patients that are losing weight through the plant-based diet and their metabolism isn't slowing like it was when I put people on the high protein shake diet and they lost lots of weight and lots of muscle uh, at the same time. Um, it's important to get food as whole as possible. And I think this is a great example. If you look at a whole wheat, when you eat it, there's a blood sugar response, but it's completely different than fine wheat flour, which is a huge blood sugar response. So which one are you going to be hungrier on two hours later? It's going to be the fine wheat one because the blood sugar is going to surge. Insulin is going to surge because of that. Blood sugar is going to drop. You're going to be hungry again sooner. Fiber is crucial, absolutely crucial to success and to feeling full. We eat so little fiber, 10 to 15 grams is the average American. My patients, they come in, everyone's eating high protein. Everyone is eating high protein because they think that's what it is. And no one's eating fiber. And they're missing out on this idea that you could get a huge portion that fills you up without getting nearly as amount of calories. And you look at oils, oils are a killer. So what we're going out now, I tell you I don't like counting calories, but I like the idea of calorie density. And what the calorie density says is if, I, I use 600, but calorie density you, is looking at the amount of calories per weight of food. And the idea is if it's 600 or less, you could eat as much as you want, all right? It doesn't matter. And the reason is technically you can't eat as much as you want. There is a limit, like if you ate, Two th if your metabolic rate is 1,800 and you ate 2,000 calories worth of broccoli, you will gain weight. But you can't possibly eat 2,000 calories worth of broccoli. It just isn't going to happen. And that's the key behind this calorie density. Now look at oils over there. Oils are a killer. They are extremely, extremely calorie dense. And it's one thing that I've found over and over my patients when they come to me and they're, I'm eating healthy, I'm eating healthy. And as I look through their diet, and especially when you're eating out, when you're eating out, even when they give you the calorie amounts, they're not giving you the calorie amount of the oil that's on the grill that they're using to cook with. Because that's getting into the food. Oil is extremely calorie dense. And you got to look at it. Let's, okay, let's talk about ridiculousness here. All right, Pam cooking spray. All right, so it says Pam cooking spray, all natural. So if you look at the ingredients in there of their all natural stuff, it starts with canola oil. So first of all, there is not canola oil bubbling up from the ground, right? It is not natural. It's processed to get that way. Um, I also have never seen propellant naturally in its natural, I don't, you know, there's propellant. Um, okay, so there are zero calories in Pam cooking spray and there's zero grams of fat, but it's an oil. So how is there zero calories and zero grams of fat? Can anybody tell me? Okay, so what's the serving size? The servings, you can't see the serving size up there? It says one-third of a second of a spray. <laughs> one-third of a second of a spray. So I don't, I don't know how you measure one-third of a second. Uh, you'd have to, I could just imagine like the one person's got to stop. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, but that's not what people do, right? They take that pan, they're like, oh, this is zero calories. 
I don't know why I'm getting overweight. Shh. And people, the funny thing is that people are so scared. Like people come into me and I'm looking at their diet log and it's just like, you know, cheeseburger and, and bacon. And, and it's just, un, I'm like looking, I'm like, oh my God, this diet's horrible. I said, well, let's try something different. Like for lunch, let's have a potato. Potato? Well, isn't that bad for you? I'm like, oh yeah, the potato's bad for you. And meanwhile, the potato was the most satiating food. When they did a study where they had people eat all these different foods, you could see the potato was off the chart up there as the most satiating food you can eat. There is nothing better than a potato to control hunger. So I have my patients mash up a potato and put black beans and salsa and avocado, and that's a great lunch, and they're full for the rest of the day. So I actually teach some cooking classes to my patients, and what I basically tell them is keep it simple. I mean, for breakfast, Berries and some muesli cereal is fantastic. Or oatmeal and berries, it's pretty, it's delicious. Salad with soups for lunch, always get some beans in there. Beans are actually have a really good effect at controlling blood sugars over a lot of time. We have vegetable chilies for dinner that are really great, or I make whole grain pastas. I say I make, my wife would kill me if she heard me say that. Um, and. Uh, the food is delicious. It, it tastes fantastic. This is my favorite meal. This is a restaurant in Houston, which is called the Macrobiotic Platter, and it's just rice and beans and steamed vegetables, uh, and I eat that thing in like one second, and I am full forever afterwards. But not just, you're, you're full, and I probably don't follow that Okinawa rule. I mean, I'm, I'm full. I'm not 80% full, uh, because it was so good. but I don't feel bad. I don't feel weak and tired. I don't have that two o'clock after lunch, you know, oh my God, I feel, I feel unreal energy for a 46 year old guy uh, I feel like I could you know climb mountains um, and the way I look at food is differently I can't believe what I used to eat it was so ugly and now it's just so beautiful and so delicious and these are the visuals I really try to stress to my patients because it's the visuals that are so important I always tell them you know if you're not that hungry if you're not hungry enough to eat an apple you're not that damn hungry uh, so eat an apple first and then make a decision you got a craving eat an apple and then reassess I tell you what, you could have the ice cream if you eat an apple and then you want the ice cream. But you eat the apple and you're like, yep, yeah, you know, I'm all right. And people think this diet's extreme. I, when people tell me a vegan diet is extreme, I'm just like, you know, I can, this is extreme. I mean, what they're doing, tearing up your body, absolutely destroying it with every bite. And what we eat is extreme. Real quick, a few words on exercise. You know, what fits your busy schedule better, exercising one hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? I have to have these discussions with people because people are constantly, I can't, I don't have time, I can't, I can't, I can't. I hear the word I can't over and over again. So I can't, you know, I, I say to people, this is my workout algorithm. Should I work out today? Yes, and then work out. No, yes, you should, go and work out. Uh, and, but... We have to have a correct concept of working out because it doesn't, they, they don't have to be crazy like me. You, I like the, I like exercise because I could set tangible goals like we talked about before and I could see results, but you don't have to go crazy with it. To be healthy, you don't have to go crazy. What is the best exercise to lose weight? You know what the best exercise to lose weight is? It's actually the exercise that you will do. <laughs> All right. So if you will swim, then that is the best exercise. If you do Zumba, then that is the best exercise. If you go for a walk, then that is the best exercise. You just have to move. And the funny thing about exercise is that it's probably not even the exercise that's important. It's the NEAT. Have you guys heard of the NEAT? Non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is a fancy doctor word for saying movement. It is the movement you do in a day. So they've done great studies where they have desk workers, like people that just sit at a desk all day, and then they go and you know, work out like crazy, do CrossFit or whatever. They're not getting the same benefit as someone who's actually getting 10,000 steps a day. So I actually love, 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 love Fitbits and step counters and things like that. I absolutely require my patients to use it, I'm constantly asking them how many steps they get a day. I like it for several reasons. It's biofeedback, right? It tells you how many steps you're getting. You've got an easy set goal. what do we say about goals it should be smart tangible achievable measurable you could do that with the step counters i want them getting eight to ten thousand steps i don't care how you get it park further away take the stairs um after a while your body starts to understand what you need to do in order to get those th those um those numbers and they don't start at ten thousand they start at five thousand and then you know, go to 6,000, go to 7,000. So we have goals along the way to get to that 10,000 steps. There's a, a movement called the quantifiable self, which is keeping track of everything, which you think I wouldn't like because I don't like that Weight Watchers keep track of. But I like the idea of being cognizant 
of what you're doing so that you're no longer subconscious. And I talk about that a lot with my patients, being cognizant about the changes you're making and monitoring to see how you're doing with your goals. Uh, that data is very, very empowering. So one uh, real quick video left here that I just want to show you, which kind of, I think, is a great way of talking to yourself um, about how to make changes and motivate yourself. There's a guy talking to himself here. Okay. Wait, done. Just take a breather. Gotta keep going. What? It's not the deal. I think we can go on. Since when do you start thinking? Whatever. So who exactly are you trying to impress? Because you're sure not impressing me. Save your breath. We're gonna need it. Save your breath. You can't see yourself. You look disgusting. This isn't the time to start pushing. We've got to stop. You're the one who's got to stop. Me? Me? Are we in this together or what? I don't know. Are we? I'm the one who got to see you. You're the one holding me back. I'm holding you back. I'm just trying to look out for us. Not like you. You just want to ditch me. Or well, maybe I should get rid of you. Stop running. No. I'm with you. Leave your old self behind. Reincarnate now. I love that. Leave your old self behind. Reincarnate now. That is what I tell my patients and the patients that are successful. I see it in their eyes. I see them realize there's a different person out there and they could be that person. So sometimes in life, the questions are complicated, but the answers are simple. They did this huge study called the EPIC study, and they found that five servings of fruit and vegetables saves you four years of healthy life. Not smoking gives you five years. Moderate exercise gives you three more years. If you do all three of those, you get 10 healthy years added to your life. 10 healthy years. Take away alcohol, and that gives you 14 years. How many people do that in this country? 3%. 3%. It's simple. It's easy. Eat your vegetables. Change your life. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs>